Welcome back to the Crypto Labs YouTube channel. Joining me today is the one, the only Colin Mason. Colin, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Yeah, good, good to be back on the YouTube channel. So good. So good. Yeah, you're more famous than me on YouTube. Um, we're going to break down a strategy. How do you earn maximum yield? How can you take assets? How can you take coins, tokens, and really think through building a DeFi business that earns maximum yields? Uh, it's something that you held in the UIG today, and I'm kind of excited to bring it on YouTube and just kind of share a just a thought process to it. This is a DeFi business and you can earn yield and you hear me say yield on yield on yield. We're going to be exploring some of that. So I'll let Colin kind of take over and he's going to show us his uh, his ninja magic. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, it's, it's a question we get a lot. It's just like, well, what do I do with my returns, right? Do I hold them? Do I convert them back to stables? Do I hold them in their own assets and wait for the bull run? Do I compound it back into the position? Um, but what I wanted to do is just share the whiteboard, have a little whiteboard session and just talk about, hey, here are, here are the few things that I'm doing personally. Like I, I have these three positions and this is exactly what I'm doing. And I think it might be cool to visually see it. Uh, but first off, Lucas, what I wanted to show you, a little behind the scenes actually, um, very quickly here, portfolio review section. This is not live yet. Uh, and it probably will be here in the in the, in, in the afternoon. Yep. But this is going to be a little behind the scenes of exactly what we're going to be talking about today, which is, hey, what's Colin, me, what's Colin's overall strategy? And then what is he doing in each of these positions? How is he treating it? And this whiteboard session, I think will give you a good understanding of, hey, what could you do with the returns that you're making? Because these pools and positions, these DeFi businesses are generating yield. They're generating returns returns in the two during a lot of returns liquidity. yes so it's what do i do with it do i compound it back in do i move it to something different so what i wanted to do is just show you three different examples of pools and strategies that i'm in that you could adapt to your own now what i want to mention here lucas before we really dive in is that every single one of my positions i have a different strategy and mm. so if i ask you hey what's your strategy you should well you should have a, a very specific strategy for every position you're in. Mm -hmm. You can have an overall strategy of what you're trying to do, but my wrapped, uh, my my fetch uh, BNB pool is different than my arrow wrapped ETH, which is different than my neon soul. Mm -hmm. They all have different strategies because they're all different assets on different chains, different returns, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you guys want more strategy it. videos? Okay. If you're watching this on YouTube, let us know in the comments if you want more strategy videos because we can go deep. Like we could we could do hours of training around all the different levers you can pull. So let me know in the comments if this is a interest to you absolutely strategy is a really important piece because a lot of the work up front and i went live today and i talked about this heavily is we're doing a lot of work prior to entry and there's a lot of youtube videos that are on that too but prior to entry i want to get into a fetch bb pool let's say but now once i'm in now what the heck do i now do what right? do i do and right so this is i hopefully it gives you some source of inspiration so let's just talk through this real quick I have some fiat, I convert it into fetch and I convert it into BNB and I open up a position. I, I deposit these into a liquidity pool in which I'm earning more fetch and I'm earning more BNB. Now, one strategy that you can employ, which was 90% of what I have been doing over the last six, seven months is taking those two returns, those two assets, not comping them back in, but keeping them separate, holding them inside of a bull run bag or a, a cold storage wallet, right? And mm -hmm. so, I'm in this fetch BNB as users are swapping back fetch and BNB back and forth inside of the decks inside of the liquidity pool. I'm earning fetch. I'm earning BNB. I then take those rewards. I push them into my cold storage wallet and I hold them separately because I expect price appreciation over the next couple of months or a couple of years. So that's one strategy you can do. And I would say that was 90% of what I've been doing over the last six months, but I've really started to take this up a notch. And this is really what I wanted to show you today is that I take some fiat, which is what I've done. I've opened up positions in arrow wrapped ETH. And first off, Lucas, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. This is not financial advice, obviously, right? This isn't, depending on when you're watching this, these might not be the best plays, but for me, this is what I'm doing currently. So don't just use it as education. So I took some fiat, I converted it into arrow and wrapped ETH, opened up a position on Uniswap. Same thing on Neon and Soul. I took some fiat, opened up a Neon and Soul pool on Orca. And I've been in that for four months. It's still been doing pretty good. But I have two slightly different um, strategies here. So let's look at the arrow wrapped ETH. So I opened up a position on Uniswap with arrow wrapped ETH. In Uniswap, I earn more arrow and I earn more wrapped ETH as two separate rewards that I can claim. And I could put them in my bull rag, bull run bag, or I can use them to generate more yield. And so what I've done is I have uh, came up with a strategy where I take the arrow and the wrapped ETH. I'm personally converting wrapped ETH into USDC. I'm taking that arrow and now USDC and I'm opening up a arrow USDC full range position on Aerodrome, 
which I'm then staking to earn the arrow emissions. Now, this might be like very fast here, but think about this. I have a Uniswap position. Instead of compounding it back into this position, which you could definitely do, I'm taking the rewards and opening up a full range position. And the reason why I'm doing a full range position on Aerodrome is right now I'm earning 110% uh, APR on arrow emissions. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm, I'm providing arrow and USDC into a pool on Aerodrome. I'm staking it and now earning 110% on arrow, which then I'm taking that arrow and moving it into my bull run. Bull run Can I add bullets. one thing there? Yes, please. Because then also, if you want to even just to show how you can take this even further, then you could take your arrow and yes. lend it for 60, 70% over on ExtraFi if you really wanted to. And, and you could keep doing that per infinity on different protocols. Pretty cool. Like yield on yield on yield on yield on yield. On yield on yield. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And that I'm told I'm holding in my in my cold storage, but you can absolutely see yeah. how to stake it for another 60%. I probably I should do that. I didn't even think about that. So great, great so to cool. bring that up. But yeah, so just wanted to share that is is or I really want to talk about this, Lucas. Like why full range and why not open up a concentrated yep. position with this? Because someone asked me that. I said, great question. Let me dive into that. If I were to put it inside of a concentrated, I would earn more rewards. Yes, potentially, right? But what I'm setting myself up for is that if Arrow has a big run up in price appreciation, mm -hmm. and I'm in a concentrated pool, if that Arrow moves up in value, I will have my Arrow start to get converted into USDC in a sense, almost selling it laddering out on the way up not nothing wrong with that. But what I want to do is I want to take this Arrow here that I'm earning as rewards and having more exposure to it no matter what the price does. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to do is take the rewards that I'm earning in this pool have this business that's still operating, but having an arrow position that I now have arrow USDC generating more arrow, but in a full range position that I don't have to worry about getting converted out of it or going out of range. And so for me, this is a really, really passive hands-off strategy that I can take my rewards, open up another pool that's mm -hmm. generating more rewards, which now Lucas even brought to me further, which I can then take to uh, extra fight or more rewards so again this is just ways that we can start to I mean, maximize you making, our effort you know you could anyone watching this you could think of like maybe you're making 250 percent here and then you risk off in a full range for 110 percent on that earning and then you risk off to lending for 50 percent on that earning you calculate the yield on that you're making 20 years progress in one year compared to traditional markets so i love it and and Absolutely. and like colin said apply it to your own assets and your own overall strategy but these kind of micro strategies slash um kind of game plans here it can layer over a lot of different hundreds of different positions absolutely and to to summarize this one last just one last thing i wanted to put here is that uh, someone asked me well why don't you just take these two rewards compound it back into this position and i said that's a great strategy however there's one downside to it that i want to avoid is that if I take all of my rewards in Arrow Rapteeth, compound it back into Arrow Rapteeth, that's great because now I'm earning rewards, top of rewards, like you just mentioned, it's great. But because it's compounding back to the same position, that's a concentrated pool. If Arrow makes the move up high, if it has a big price appreciation and it's in a concentrated pool, and that arrow then gets converted into wrapped ETH as the price mm -hmm. moves within my range. Now I'm losing exposure to arrow as it's moving up in price. Mm -hmm. And so I am using the strategy that I have this pool, right? That's still running. But now if arrow makes a big run up, I'm getting mm -hmm. exposure to arrow fully in a few different ways. So that's, that's the reason why I've been employing this strategy instead of just compounding it back into the same position, which mm -hmm. you can do just not what I'm doing. And Lucas, just very quick here, another sure. example. Neon and Soul. This is on Orca. You've been earning um, a lot of money on Neon Soul for oh a very gosh. long time. Yeah, it's like so been much. like your top it, position. It's been kind of crazy. Um, but it's a smaller. I would say this is a it's a micro cap token, yep. right? So so this is a more risky, uh, more risky. Just understand that. But Neon and Soul has been great to me, and I'm no longer. I have a big bag of Soul that I've held on the for the bull run. So I'm no longer wanting to increase my exposure to Neon. I want to move it more into Soul. And so an example I'm doing is I'm using this Neon and Soul pool strictly for cash flow, which produces more Neon and more Soul. Now, instead of compounding that back into the position or instead of holding it for the bull run, I'm converting that neon to USDC and I'm taking that soul and now USDC and creating a soul USDC pool on Orca with a very wide range. Now, this wide range has 
a lot of room on the top end so that if soul makes a big run up, I'm earning rewards as I allow soul to have more of room for price appreciation. And so this soul USDC is not just meant for cash flow or to produce most more, more soul in USDC. It's more so sort of like a store of value that's earning me six to eight percent a month still, which mm -hmm. is pretty exciting, right? So okay. um hopefully let me summarize that one more time. Neon and soul, cash flow machine earning more neon, earning more soul. I don't want any more exposure to neon than I already do. So I'm converting that to USDC, taking the soul, USDC, opening up a wide range on Orca, which is earning me more soul and more USDC, which I'm using to then just compound back into this position uh, as a little cycle here. So yeah, hopefully it makes okay. sense. It's a very exciting thing that I, I like to talk about and what we're going to be sharing more of inside of this portfolio yep. and strategy section in the UIG. Very, very excited for that. So so some Thanks for today. sharing. I hope anyone watching took some notes. Think about how you can apply that to your own portfolio. And if you want more strategy videos, we're happy to like I can get the team on here to talk their strategies and like get this going more often. We could have Colin pop in more often. We could have Reed. We could have Trung. We could I could interview y'all's over and over and over for different strategies. We're all so into different things and different ways of thinking that I think it's really beneficial for UIG members to get exposure to a lot of different ways of investing, but also we could bring it on YouTube. So if y'all's want more of this kind of stuff, leave it in the comments below. If there was value in this video, which you probably wouldn't be watching yet, if there wasn't, uh, like this video, subscribe to this channel. And what I'll do is I'll leave four videos on the four corners of the screen as usual. Study up, spend some time going deep on this stuff. This stuff, it's a skill and you're building a skill set that's yeah. going to reward you for decades. So double down, study up. And with that said, we'll see you in the next video.